Our last talk is the chain. First leg of this secure combination is the additive homomorphic hashes by Zui Yu Zhu Yan Huang. Zui Yu Zhu, we will give us a talk. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, this work, chain move fast, leg of this secure combination protocol using active homomorphic hashes. Okay, first let me briefly introduce what is Q Q hand completion. There are two parties that are the receiver as before. They have a they have a six inputs x and y and the public function n. We want to evaluate this map on the public on the secret input x and y. And they want to we have nothing but uh, this public this input. Uh, this computer protocol has many useful applications. We can run many applications in private observing ways, such as uh, joint fault detection between banks, uh, they have this, uh, this query system of uh, genome study. Uh, there are two famous, uh, two known certain model. One is the so called semi Alice model. The double three are assumed to always follow the protocol, but trying to gain extra information from observing this on different transcripts. This model is quite weak because it cannot assume what a level three can or cannot do. So much recent work has moved to this formalist model. In a formalist model, the level three can do anything he wants. There's no assumption on the on the level's behavior. And this is the model this work goes on. The there is a well known method to go against uh, to uh, enforce only behavior is so-called kind of choose. In kind of choose, <coughs> basically you have genuine, uh, a lot of copies of double verges, then you should some of them to, to check, and then you can do it the rest. If some errors goes right, you, can, you do not detect any error in genuine check phase, the evaluation circuit are possibly to be all correct. And the most advanced kind of choose idea is so-called batch card. Uh, in a single execution setting, the execution of a completion is viewed as uh, traversing all the gates, uh, all the gates in a topological order. And in the batch schedules model, the, the gather first generates a, a lot of gates for the completion. Then the two parties shortly use the quantity protocol to decide which of the gates should be checked. Then they jo also jointly use quantity to pack the unchecked gates into these buckets and then do some wise soldering, soldering technique to, to combine all this stuff together, then do the evaluation. There are lots of work uh, employees idea to do the single execution uh, competition. There are also other works that extend this idea to execute a single function many times in parallel. Uh, the main result of our work and all this work is we develop a method to stop in one of with XO one hashes. And we can achieve to uh, uh, one single good gate in every bucket can ensure security. Uh, the other works require um, great majority. And it also improves the uh, better gate category from one force to one to, to, to half. And we can improve this rate to, to one, some different setting. And last, we have proved that for Lego based protocol, no matter how the circuit line, how, 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 the, how large the circuit is, you need at least uh, two gable, two gates per bucket, or two gable gates per virtual gates. This is a sometimes a sometimes a limit. Uh, uh, previous, uh, previous people, uh, before that, people always think that we have uh, like O n over log n uh, advantage. And in my talk, I will only focus on the first bit uh, of the first uh, first video. We can read my paper to see the more detailed uh, the other two results. Uh, let's like first talk about the last story. At some point of the of the protocol, the evaluator after evaluating some gable case in a bucket, he will, he will get a uh, Y label W A X, where X is like denoted you know, some the semantic value of this Y label. And he has to transmit this X to the other label of the whole bucket. How can he do he do this? Uh, if everyone is honest and we have set up it such that all the Y label and the they are at the XR of their label and, uh, and the public, uh, uh, and not, not public, not, and the global data, then we can let the governor who, not, who knows everything 
consider the differences of the z labels to the vector, then the inventor can can compute the uh, Coulomb correct one of the y label along the y of the package. But the things that we are facing are uh, active diversity, the challenge is how can we ensure the correctness of this of this difference? Um, if we have a extra homomorphic hash scheme, we have such a solution. We can hash the z label on y a and y b as a z label, and as the value send this hash of the value z labels to the inverter. Then, because these hashes are homomorphic, the inverter can easily compute the hashes of the difference and then can verify the correctness of the difference. Does this solve the problem? Actually, no. Because the, the inventor can now verify the Y label of the AX against the hash of the A0. Then he can learn whether, whether X is there or not. So the government won't hash about this. So our second attempt is to introduce so called accumulation B. We don't hash the Z labels. Instead, we we'll hash a random label, the PA on, the, on YA and PB on YB. And we also hash the random, random Bs. A and PB. And we also have to hash the global delta. In this case, we let the governor to send all these hashes to the developer before the soldering space. Then, uh, if two ones are to be soldered, we let the governor to first send the difference of this of this combination means, and the developer can verify its correctness and guess the hashes, uh, know that the hash is still homomorphic. Then we can let the uh, governor to send the differences of the ones. The event can also verify the correctness. And this technique can also be used to soldering wires with different data. Previously, we were talking about the wires of, uh, of the same data. Here, we're talking about different data. Uh, for example, we have data 1, our A, and data Q, our B. Now, now we don't have a global data. Instead, we have a data 1 hash and data Q hash. We let the, we let the uh, scalper send the hashes to the inventor and have to send the two different uh, wire differences to finish the soldering. The inventor can <coughs> verify, uh, can verify the correctness of these differences and, of the, and obtain a uh, use proper difference to obtain the uh, Y label on the Y of the package. And now you may wonder why we want to take all this effort to solve wires with different data. Uh, the main uh, the main benefit is that this allow every gate to use a uh, use a, a local version generated data instead of a global data. This can allow that we fully open a gate, a, 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 a gate by revealing his local data, and this doesn't have the security of the whole protocol, and this leads to a uh, uh, checking with data, uh, fully get the to one instead of one or two or one or four. And this is very important for, for you to, to kind of choose a larger, a larger big components, uh, which, which might require you to open, fully open a component to check. And now, as all these results are based on such an uh, idea, uh, such a homomorphic hash, we have to develop this interactive hash or I hash to realize this idea. Now, first, let's look at the idea of an idea of I hash. Um, in I hash protocol, we have, uh, we have a sender and a receiver and a functionality. The sender provides a message to the idea of functionality, that the functionality sends the receiver a uh, hash of the message. <laughs> And this, this message can be derived from this message, uh, message from some public, not the public known algorithm, as well as the length of the hash is shorter than the length of the message itself. And this hash should have some properties. First, it has to be exomorphic. As you see, the exon of hashes is the hash of the exon, the hash and the community. Second, it has to be binding, or it's not hash at all. And so they two different messages, they are supposed to have different packages with very, very high probability. And this has to be hiding. Let me say the hash itself has to be shorter than the message, such that the receiver cannot learn the entire message. The receiver may learn some information, but not the entire message. And uh, now let's come to a realization. In our protocol, uh, the message is the uh, Vector of the, uh, is a simple vector of the length L, and we can fit this vector into a Boolean encoding to extend its length to n. Then fit this encoding into a omega of an OT protocol, 
we use the word we use the only we watch some of this vector by this OT protocol. And the watch symbol uh, comes up, that's it, so this uh, hash of the message. And let's look at the script, uh, uh, script intuition of this design. If there's the difference in the original message, uh, two different messages, then it might be some, not, there'll be a lot of difference in the encoding. This is due to the property of the real encoding. Then, with very high probability, the receiver will see some of these differences. Let's do this to that the different messages has different uh, hashes. And the, uh, if the receiver uniformly watch these things, we have such a detection read. Uh, that, but the, the receiver cannot watch too much, uh, too many positions. Otherwise, yeah. because this is a detecting and linear uh, real encoding. If he watch too much, he will learn with time message. And even if we don't let him watch too much, we can still set up the parameters such that the binding property can ensure that we very small to know. Now, you may wonder that uh, we have to use uh, open up an OT, which might be very expensive per message, but that's not actually the case. We need only one message for holy number of uh, holy number of uh, one, only one OT for holy number of messages. Uh, actually, we can with a lot of loss of generation. Let's look at hash, uh, how we hash random messages. The sender first pick a number of seeds and seeds, then use PRT to use ten uh, symbols. Theta, uh, theta sigma one to theta sigma n. Then he use the first L message, uh, first L symbol. And the vector fit into a systematic random encoding to extend to uh, length of n. Then he takes the first L symbols as the message. This is the random message. Then he fits these seeds into a omega OT, <coughs> and the receiver watches some of the seeds. Just like the center side, the receiver also uses PRT to extend these seeds to symbols that have only a limited number of symbols. To obtain, to obtain a hash, the receiver first preserves the symbols at the first L position. Then the sender computes the XL correction between the last L symbols from the random random PRG and the last L symbols from the encoding, and he gets an XL correction, and he sends this XL correction to the receiver. The receiver then applies this correction to the last L symbols of the result from PRG, then he gets the whole hash of the message. This type of OT will only need once the whole time, and the rest of the part will only send an XL hash for communication for a per, per, per random message. Now let's look at the main protocol security. In our protocol, as I just mentioned, we only have to guarantee one correct gate per bucket to ensure security, not like other protocol in the uh, majority of uh, In our protocol, good bucket is so-called good, as long as it contains at least one correctly generated cover gate. Before we proceed, let's introduce the concept of better labels. In Shawa, there are zero label and one label. There are better labels. The governor knows the labels, the governor knows which label could be valid or invalid, because the inventor doesn't know. So, how can the inventor know whether a label at the online phase and the validation is seen is better or invalid? Because there are hashes on labels, on one on ones. He can compute the hash of zero label and one label. From the hash on wires, so he doesn't know which hash is zero or one, but he can he can get it set. Then a wire label is called valid if the director can match the hash. Otherwise, the wire label is called invalid because if a wire this wire label cannot match any of the hashes, it must be a corrupt label and it must come from an incorrect gate. And this wire this wire label will be discarded for sure. And uh, now let's see why we can get this security. If there are only one gate per bucket. Because we have already discussed all the garbage labels, <laughs> then we must face the whole one of two cases. The first case is that we got a lot of one labels, then they are the same. Most of that we already have a correct label, a correct, a correct gate, we have a correct label. Now all the labels are the same, so all the labels are correct, then so we are sure. Of bucket. Okay. So out of those cases, guys, we don't have one single value, we have two different values that we have a set of while labels and they, some of them are this and some of them are that. Now, because all the garbage labels are discarded, this, this labels remain either 
fair labor, or one labor. So they are excellent. They are done. Now the question is that, can we extract the cheapest input from this data? If we have deals, then, okay, I have, your, I have my input, I have the input, I have everything. Cheater, you can't be cheated, I can't do everything. So the question is, can we do this? Yes. So that on each cheater's input, we have WAX, depending his input, and then we have hatches. Uh -huh. The only thing we need to know, or the together need to know, spread X is a communication grid. So if we can enforce the governor or the cheater to generate all the communication bits with this data deterministically, then if the writer can get the data, he can get the communication bits. If he get the communication bits, he can get the X, then we are good. OK, how can we do this? We do this from a zero-knowledge proof. Uh, we let the, the governor <coughs> use data to generate the seeds. He will be used in the iHash. Also, have this community uh, bit I generate from iHash and the hash with seeds. And then we let the pin also hash with seeds and send them to the, to the evaluator or the receiver of the hash. Then the receiver also obtains the seeds. Now, he hey, hey, receives hash of the seeds from the from the sender directly, then he obtains seeds from this omega of the OT in the hash. Then the seeds the general has will be used to generate the communication bits, G A P D, blah blah blah. So then the seeds the receiver has will generate used to generate the hash of the communication bits, P A P D, blah blah blah. Then the generator needs to prove that, okay, I have seen your hashes. This is hashes I really from come from seeds, and the seeds really come from a delta. But the receiver has to verify that the hashes you send me matches with the seeds I obtained from the from the hash. That the omega of the OT from a hash. If you all the verify uh, the seeds, then we believe that we can see that okay the 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 guy really use delta to generate the seeds, to generate the computer bits. And we can see that if the receiver obtains this delta, then the receiver will be able to Spread all the communication bits and with the variable, the event will spread all the inputs of the cheater. And all these proceeds, they are expensive, really, they are expensive, but they only to be one single institution, no matter how the, how the size of the competition, they are only one single institution during the setup setting, during the, single, during the setup phase. And there's another challenge of uh, in practice. Because we all know that A is a nine is a very powerful method and it runs ten times or to the eighty times faster than sharp two hundred fifty six. But it has a limitation, it only works on one hundred and ninety two bit inputs. However, if we want to achieve one hundred and ninety two bit security, our one label that we might this uh, vector of symbols is less than the four hundred and thirty two bits. So we cannot directly fit in into the ASM9. Our solution is to compress it into a 128 bits stronger label than fit into AS9. And how can we compress that? Uh, for one label of and uh, for L symbols, it has uh, it has oh we symbols of the encoding of the public reason encoding are leaked in the hash. But we don't know the government doesn't know where it is leaked. And there are only L and omega symbols are remain. Then we can use a randomly random full rank matrix P to multiply with this vector, then we can get a result. This result is cover symbols and this length is 180 bit. Surprisingly, we found answers. The the entropy in the original message is 188 bits, but the entropy, the information entropy in the result of this multiplication is smaller than 127.999. We can end that. Five or ten nights here. It says as you have lost almost nothing from this compress, and this idea is very similar to the leftover hash lemma. But if you apply this leftover hash lemma directly in a backwards way, then the, the result is present is presently bad. We have uh, we have preserved like eighty more quits than directly with the lemma, and this is. Uh, our performance uh, of our work in some some select applications. Uh, basically, uh, this WMK protocol, which one of the CWF is slightly faster than us, 
in most of the setting, but it has its own elimination. Why is that this dynamic capability is very kind of slow, maybe a or hundred times or so than our work when processing the the link wires. The other limitation is that this data protocol cannot handle reactive conditions such as OJRA or poker, who is uh, died <coughs> in the last day, uh, poker or something like that. And our protocol is always almost faster than the best previous legal side protocol, setting the DES setting in one. This is because <coughs> DES is a very short, uh, really short input with a really, 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 uh, huge computation which uh, we cannot leave to the, our advanced in, uh, in the web setting, besides uh, our bandwidth is slightly larger, and uh, this is kind of the bottleneck. And for some special applications, such as AES, there's another alternative we can do. In the legal cell protocol, uh, wire salary is much, much more expensive than government goes. And if we can use large components, large, com large government components, for example, uh, uh, addition, a uh, mass, or uh, spice as a as a continuous unit, then we can skip the sorting for the, all the internal ones, which can improve our efficiency. And this typically need to to uh, fully open of the double uh, of the double components. Mm -hmm. And our technique of sorting different uh, ones with different deltas can exactly cover its needs. And so our work is already quite efficient if we will suffice. As a as a current to pack a current screen instead of any case, we still get a, like uh, double or can speed up one hundred percent and save half of the bandwidth. And our implementation is available on GitHub. And I have mentioned that we have a much much more scalable, or we can say extreme scalable follow up uh, for work based on this work. Thank you. I'm really taking questions. Are you losing the bricks or property or through wire soldering can you have something like flexor or Yeah, we can still have three X so basically uh, I can do Uh, this basically is a hard function. It, it only works on two parties, like you and me. I'm always the same thing, always the to be interactive. And it's not like normal hash. It doesn't have a hiding. It doesn't hide all the bits in your message. It only hide a, a random position. So it only works on a random message. But you instantiate your hash with the shards? No, we don't need a shards. 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 We don't need a no question? If there is no question, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> this is the end of this session. Thanks uh, all the speakers for the last presentation and thanks all of you for being here. Enjoy your talk. <laughs>